dude, guess what? So I was walking around in my room the other day and I thought to myself, hmm, I'm gonna check the incubator. And when I opened it up, I looked inside and was like, oh crap. I hatched out a bunch of cute baby panther chameleons today, and I want to start a series where I raise them up from hatchlings to adults. But here's the kicker. I'm going to raise them all up bioactive style. Wait a second. Did you just say the forbidden word? Yeah, I totally said it, dude. And so I'm going to call this series the bioactive experiment, and I can't wait to show you guys. All right, guys. My name's Ryan, and you're watching Mighty Morphin Reptiles. Let's roll the tape. So I first start off this baby bin build by getting a 56 quart Sterilite bin from Walmart and then, then I virtually cut out the whole entire lid out itself and then I grab window mesh screen and then I hot glue gun all the sides to the lid itself. This will provide a lot of ventilation that I'll need for my baby chameleons. However guys, I still want a lot more ventilation than just the top as it's really important to have good fresh airflow for your chameleon. So I'm going to be cutting out a square on this side and on this side, and I'll be repeating the same process with the window mesh screen and hot gluing gun to the sides. And then I take some measurements, and with the measurements, I cut out some filter foam, and I'll be using this as a drainage layer, and it's about one inch thick. Then I'll be adding my homemade terrarium substrate that consists of just orchid bark, organic potting soil, and sphagnum moss. And I pour it in and just get it to about three inches thick. Then I quickly give the substrate a good misting. Then I grab some oak leaves and cover the whole entire substrate in a nice layer. All right, now that I got the leaf litter in, let's get to planting it. So the plants I decided to use are an umbrella plant, AKA Schefflera. This is a really good plant that even for your adult chameleons to use as if you look on the leaves, they can climb all over it and they could totally drink off it. And then another plant I also wanna use is called Bella Palm Plant. I really love this. I've always used this for babies in the past or when they're in their single nursery cages. This plant just works really well. Honestly, this is one of my favorite plants to use for honestly like micro sized reptiles. But also I'm gonna be keeping them in the pot this time because like these baby bins that I'm gonna be making, they're not gonna be forever. So what's the point of like undoing it, putting the plant in shock and then two three weeks later just like pulling it back out it doesn't make sense to me so instead what i'm going to do this time is just grab the plants just shove them all the way down to the bottom as far as i can go and then just leave them like that and then put some leaf litter around inside the pot itself And this is how my baby bin is looking so far, and I'm really liking it. There's tons of plants for them to climb all over, but I still want them to have more branches inside here. So, so I'm gonna be using all the spider wood that I had lying around for my hardscape box. Cause you guys know me, I love doing builds all the time. And I'm gonna place them all throughout the varium and optimize the climbing space as much as I can because I know if the babies start climbing all over each other, that's when they get really stressed out. And at this stage, they're super fragile. So you wanna make sure they have optimizing climbing space. And then I decided to actually like use some of these branches to push down the leaves of this palm plant. So that way when the lid goes on to it, it doesn't smash the palm plant. You know, I'll be honest guys, even though I wasn't planning on trying to make anything beautiful, I actually really like the look of this. It actually is pleasant to look at. It's not just something super ugly. It's still not up to my usual standards, but just for a baby bin, this is pleasant to look at. Then for my microfauna, I just use springtails and then I add some dwarf isopods in. All right, you guys ready to add these cute little suckers in? Yeah, they're totally ready to crawl into the new world. Dude, I gotta say, look at this. They're so freaking cute. Look at them. The little, little, they're like little tree monkeys. Look at them. And I got a total of 23 chameleons in here. They're just so adorable. Look at it. Now I really am enjoying the look of this little build for them. This is gonna be so much fun raising them up in this. And I wanna mention that babies, they actually don't need to eat for the first three days because when they're born, they have this thing called the placenta and they actually get nutrients off of that placenta for three days. So before we continue this video, I wanna leave them alone so they're not super stressed out, but we'll get back to them and we'll start feeding them. 
All right, so it's been a few days now and they're starting to eat for me, so I'm pretty happy about that. And now I wanna show you them eating because like, dude, that's literally half of the fun of these little babies is just watching them eat. So usually in the first week, I like to feed them Malagascan or fruit flies, you know? And these are like the super tiny ones. I just dip them in like that. And then for my supplements, I usually like to use like bee pollen mixed with calcium. I do a 50-50 mix. I usually like the bee pollen because it's actually a really good source of natural vitamin A. Put it in there, shake it up. I think just a little creepy looking. All right, let's feed them. So for this very, I'm just gonna kind of sprinkle them around everywhere. Oops. This one already looks like he was about to eat. Oh, he just got it. Look at that. I just love watching them eat. It's just literally so much freaking fun. I just love how they shoot their little tongues out. <laughs> Look at this one. He's all looking at like, hey, you got any more of those? Oh, just missed this one eating. So freaking cute. Oh, this guy got his eyes locked on. Ooh, he got it. Yeah, you're gonna be a growing boy. Oh, this one's gonna get one too. Come on, you got this. Yeah, get it, son. And I wanted to mention to people that fruit flies, yeah, they're great for like starting out little babies, but you don't want to feed them in the long run for the chameleons, because honestly, the fruit flies, they really have like hardly any nutrition. And like, if you just feed them that, then they'll actually grow super slow. And what I actually prefer to feed them is, a better alternative to start them off with is bean beetles. As bean beetles are highly nutritious, they have more protein, more fat, and I promise you, if you feed them bean beetles when they're young, they will grow way faster. And bean beetles are actually really easy to culture. You literally just put in like three inches of beans, put a culture of bean beetles in, stick it next to a heat lamp for like two or three weeks, and it'll just start popping off. And usually, I like to start feeding bean beetles within like the first week or so. And then after like the first two weeks, I will try to like get my panther chameleons on like quarter inch crickets from there, because once they start eating crickets, that's when they really start exploding in growth. And another reason that bean beetles are really good too for them is because they actually fly around and move. And baby chameleons really love it when their prey item's active and moving around. They're really a visual eater. I mean, they kind of got to be with those googly eyes, right? So with how I like to feed my bean beetles, I just really like to grab my culture and just stick it inside the actual bin or cage, whatever, and just like leave it in there for about like 20 to 30 minutes. So another thing, guys, people are always asking me, Ryan, how do you keep the fruit flies and like bean beetles from flying out of the bin? How do you keep them contained? They're always like escaping everywhere. Well, a lot of people will like just grab a piece of fruit and just throw it in there as a feeding station, but they'll still escape from that. And this is the reason why I actually cut out this little and put a screen top over it so like when I feed my bean beetles or fruit flies I can just put it over like that and it just really helps contain them in and now I'm not gonna say that this is 100% bulletproof but so far this is the best method I've ever had to contain the bugs in their bin all right and now I want to talk about my equipment with you guys so let's start off with UVB lighting. I use the old UVB light bulb and fixture right here, and I just have it hanging right here by fishing line. So in case you guys didn't know with baby chameleons, UVB lighting, like brand new bulbs and fixture, can be actually really harsh on their eyes, so they'll keep them closed for a little bit, you know? It's like, it's kind of like staring into the sun for them. That's the reason why I'm using an older UVB bulb. So I have a UVB meter to read how much they have. So with the screen top, that's actually gonna filter out half of the UVB reading that we have here. If I I put it right here on the side to the top I get about 3.0 maybe a little bit over 3.0 in reading so let's say the screen counts out about 30 to 50 percent of it right that's actually going to drop it down just about right to the one to two Ferguson zone that the chameleons need and for my heating so with baby chameleons too much heat is actually not good for them as well when they're first starting out so in the wild baby chameleons are actually hanging out low in the bushes so they don't really need that much heating so I just have a heat lamp right here and it's only a 29 watt heat bulb so it's not going to get that hot. And with my laser temp gun, it's going to get to about 80, 81, 82, low 80s and I think that's going to be perfect for them. And you know, a lot of people say that they don't need basking at all when they first start out but in my opinion, I still think it's important for them to bask even just a little bit as babies. 
All right, now let's go to the most important equipment for this bioactive experiment. And this is gonna involve the watering too. So the main reason why people had issues going bioactive with chameleons before is cause like when they're spraying it down, all the water would just collect and harbor a bunch of bad bacteria. But that's really cause of the issue with ventilation. So I have an oscillating fan right here that blows into the side and it'll help like circulate all the air throughout the sides and through the top of it. And I have this extra strong when I first do my misting, which I just keep it to misting first thing in the morning and 30 minutes before it lights out. That's just my normal misting for all my chameleons in general. But I've come to notice with all this experience like now with bioactive that I've been gaining, usually the problem with bioactive is not in good enough ventilation where it harbors bad bacteria. And this even happens with like tree frogs and stuff like that. So when you do bioactive with any kind of tropical species, rare, the key to it is ventilation, guys ventilation and I think with this whole entire setup that I will have success and also this is all set up on smart plugs and timers so it's all automated all right guys so it's the next day now and I just wanted to talk to you guys about something when it comes to reptile breeding so when it comes to breeding reptiles it's honestly not only sunshine and rainbows like so you end up with some sad things happening here and there and like today I actually came into the room or checked up on the baby chameleons and I actually found a couple passed away. And it's something that you're always going to have to deal with here and there as a reptile breeder with whatever you're breeding at the time. And it really sucks, you know? And like sometimes it just messes with you and it makes you feel like, damn, what did I do wrong? Like, am I a terrible person for this? And uh, the answer is no. These things happen and it's just something you're going to have to learn how to deal with. Like, it's never easy when it happens, you know? Especially with like chameleons, with them being so fragile, it's just, you're definitely gonna have to deal with it. Like, even though I've raised so many clutches up by now, it's just, it always happens here and there. I always seem to have casualties here and there. Not every clutch though, but it's just one of those things, man, so. And since this is the bioactive experiment and I wanted to document everything here and let you guys know, so I'm not gonna hold anything back when I do this series. So I just wanna let you know that I've lost two already. Now we're down to 21 chameleons. Oh, and do you guys know what I totally forgot to mention in this video? For the people who are wanting to know what locale of panther chameleons these guys are, they're actually no Sebe and they're a true blue one. So by the end of the series, I'm hoping that within the 90 day mark or so that you'll be able to see some beautiful blue chameleons. And if you ask me, no Bays are one of my favorites. They're seriously like something about that sky blue is just so mesmerizing on the chameleon. It looks so lovely. And I want to thank you guys for joining me for part one of the bioactive experiment. And I can't wait to keep the series going and show you guys my results. So, and if you guys learned something new today or enjoyed the video, then please boop that like button and consider subscribing. And one more thing, and if you're new to panther chameleons and you want to learn how to take care of a panther chameleon, then check out this care guide video right here. Or if you want to see me unbox some amazing different chameleon species with my buddy Mitch, then check out this video right here. It'll all be at the end screen. All right, guys, my name's Ryan and you're watching Mighty Morphin Reptiles.